Hello, my name is Kirsten, and this is my advertisement critique. Let me just move that out of the way. So, I chose to do two main fashion brands. I wanted to really dive deep into one, and then the other, both looking at women and men. So, I wanted to first start off by looking at both of these fashion brands' advertisements from the past. So, let's start with the women, Victoria's Secret. Now, Almost every woman knows what Victoria's Secret is. It's a lingerie brand that markets directly towards women of all ages. Um, not that they say they market towards women of all ages. They did in the past, but they don't do, do that now, obviously. But when I'm sure everybody, when they were a young girl, um, well, I guess not everybody, but when I was a young girl, I know that Victoria's Secret was very big when they first came out. They were always very big. And, you know, we always, it was this mystery of when is our mom going to let us buy our first Victoria's Secret bra, you know. Um, it was just very, you know, it, it's a culture among women, you know. we It's kind of like a coming of age sort of thing. You know, that's what Victoria's Secret was for, for I know, a lot of people my age. So um, let's talk about them. So one thing about Victoria's Secret that I want to highlight is their obsession with body or bodies like they love this type of campaign where they're talking about their vs body their angel body um and where this fails their consumers completely is they only show one type of body and their ideal victoria's secret angel is a blonde tall thin white woman unfortunately that's just how it is Here's another one of their campaigns where they're talking about body. It's the Victoria's Secret Love My Body campaign. Like I said, there's no racial diversity. They're all anorexically thin. And most of them are a shade of blonde or a very, very light brown, except for the, um, the people of color which I think is ironic because in a lot of their older ads, the people of color always, almost always had black hair. Like they, it was a person of color, black hair, like that was it. Um, which I think is ironic because that's definitely not how it is, but that's what they like to portray. This is what they like to portray. So here's another ad from that campaign. As you can see, they're, they're saying meet our newest bodies but their newest bodies are the same bodies we're seeing, seeing time and time again. They're the same, the same people. Um, and so all of these, this especially campaign was super controversial. It was so controversial when it came out um, for good reason, obviously, because they're, they're not including 90% of their consumers. So Dove came out and they made their real body campaign. You know, they didn't call it body. They called it real beauty campaign, but they showed every shape, size, color of woman. And they're like, this is what a real beauty campaign look like, looks like. When you're wanting to celebrate women, you celebrate women. Um, which I, I, among tons of many other people, remember this. And I remember being super, you know, happy when they came out and did this because it, does not make you want to buy their products when they're not including 90% of their consumers. And they're just feeding into this negative idea that women have to be thin, you have to be effortlessly beautiful, blonde, tall, to be worthy of being in a campaign, to be worthy of being a model you have to look a certain way. And that's just not the way it is. You know, like, when you're going to shop for clothes, if it's shown on one body type, you're not even going to think they're going to have your size when you walk into that store. Versus when you see the Dove campaign, you know they're going to have your size. Look at all the different sizes of women. You know that when you walk in that store, you're going to be able to find something that will fit you. And so that's why these ads are so important is because you're trying to show consumers, hey, look, buy our product because we have, it's just for you. You know, we have what you need. And, you know, Victoria's Secret, these old ads don't show that at all. They don't show diversity at all. So you'd think after all this happened, okay, yeah, sure. They would totally like 
they'll totally change it and change things up. No, because in 2014, not only, not even two years later, this came out. Victoria's Secret, The Perfect Body. Yet again, reinforcing these ideas of thinness, of the beautiful white woman, <laughs> because there is no racial diversity at all. There is one, well, I guess maybe, maybe two people of color out of all those women. It's, it's really hard to look at. <laughs> So we aren't even saved from when we're even young. You know, they came out with VS Pink. VS Pink was strictly for, you know, 13 to 22-year-olds. And they started in 2002. And they came out with this Bright Young Things campaign. Now, this was one of their really big campaigns. And I remember this being so controversial. Um, Not only because of you know, the ad, well, the ad isn't very, it's not very controversial. This one, um, for a different campaign was because they're talking about being slim, sexy signature fit for 13 to 22 year olds, 22 year olds, I could see, but the 13 year old spectrum end, you know, you don't really want to think of your 13 year old as sexy. Um, but let's focus back bright young things. So why this was so controversial was due to the fact of their content of what was in the ad their their actual product the underwear in this in in this campaign was so inappropriate for young women and this was marketed towards younger women you know and when you read these things you don't want to think of your 13 year old wearing these things so um they had to recall that campaign because of how detrimental these things were to young girls they We're trying to push them out of their childhood into their womanhood way too fast, you know, and rightfully so, so many moms and so many women were totally against this. And they're like, no, this is not okay. We can't do this to our young girls. Um, So, you know, it, it didn't just happen to older women from Victoria's Secret. It happened to younger women as well. So let's look at Calvin Klein for the men. So here's one Calvin Klein men's underwear ad, and they do men's underwear and mostly men's jeans. And and they do have women's products and they do have women's ads, which I show. But um, I want to focus on men for just a second. So here's another one of their very famous men's ad. And here's one that I actually remember um, from when I was a young girl. I remember when this came out because we were all obsessed with Bieber, obviously. Um, And I just want to talk about, first off, the other two, how the male bodies are, they're all tan. You can tell they're tan. You can tell they're extremely muscular and they're overly confident in those ads. They're, they're just like hanging out, you know, they're overly confident. And that's the, that's the kind of man they want to buy their underwear. That's what they're showing. They're saying, Hey, we want buff, tan, confident, cocky men to buy our underwear and wear our products. That's what we want. That's who we're marketing towards. And in this ad, specifically, they're like, yeah, you want to be famous. You want to be hot. You want to have girls hanging all over you. You want to be powerful. That's the kind of things they're trying to instill in their men, in the people who are buying their products. And I think it's ironic that they, you know, they have the girl there, but she's the accessory when really all... All throughout, you know, modeling and and campaigns, we've seen men kind of be an accessory. But in Calvin Klein, they make the women the accessories. And the women are very submissive and the men are very dominant. And that's what they want to kind of feed into. They're feeding into that dominant men's role, that buff, tan, cocky dude. So in this one, you can see, you know, obviously she's hanging all over him. So let's look at some other women's ads from Calvin Klein. Here's another one. For jeans. And here's another one for women's underwear from Calvin Klein. So the thing that I want to focus on is how they just make the women so submissive. And they want men to be strong, women to be submissive. That's what they want to portray. And that's what they do portray. And I think it's 
it just feeds into all these negative, just um, toxic masculinity. That's what they're feeding into, toxic masculinity. And I also want to point out that in the jeans one, she didn't have to be topless to show off a pair of jeans. And she wasn't even showing off the jeans. She was sitting in a fetal position. So how is that selling jeans? It's not. It's selling this idea of women being submissive. And it's just crazy to me. <laughs> but anyway, so you're sitting here, you're thinking it's just the way things are. This is just the way things are, right? Wrong. Because it's not. So Victoria's Secret just came out and they said they want to swap their angels for what women actually want. Now, this is an article that came out in the New York Times in June of 2021. And in this article, if you read through it, they talk about how they want to get rid of all their sexist um, ads and all their sexist views in their company. And they want to kind of stop treating their models bad because their models were heavily abused and they want to Stop feeding into this idea of the male gaze, the male fantasy. They want to stop feeding into that and give women what they want because that's who's actually buying their products. Men aren't coming in buying their products. They are sometimes for their their women, but it's women going in. It's women who are in there buying their products, and they want to give them what they want. So this is one of their ad campaigns that they just came out with. This is their another. It's another body campaign. But as you can see, tons of racial diversity, tons of women of different sizes, you know, very inclusive. When you go onto their website, this is kind of what you're greeted with. This is the first thing that kind of pops up on the Victoria's Secret website. And if you scroll down a little bit, here's, of course, the racial diversity that, that they're trying to add into their brand. And even in Victoria's Secret Pink, they're trying to add you know, tons of diversity. They've changed it from 13 to 18 to 22, which is very interesting. And then here's another one where they're kind of showing pride and it's just tons of diversity, which we love to see because that means we can shop there. You know, that's, that's what that shows us. It shows us inclusivity. So Calvin Klein is coming out with some new um, ads too as well. So this is their front page of their website. And it's completely changed the narrative. Women aren't submissive in this anymore. It's loving. It's nurturing. The men aren't big buff dudes who are overly cocky. It's intimate moments that they're kind of showing on their on their website, which I really love. And when you go to their men's underwear section, this is what you're greeted with. Men of different color and men of different sizes. You know, it's not just the big buff dudes anymore. It's showing men of all different kinds. And I think that's really good because it stops feeding into that toxic masculinity that they have to be the alphas. It, it shows them that they can be who they are, you know. And here's some other like um, print campaigns that they've done where the men aren't in these cocky, overly cocky poses. They're comfortable and I just, I love the black and white one on the other side because it's kind of a feminine pose. He's kind of dancing and it's very interesting to see that from Calvin Klein and to see them changing their narrative. And here's some of their women's campaigns. Now they're finally actually selling jeans the right way. You know, it's not, it's the jeans are the focal point. She's not naked and the underwear ad, she's a bigger girl. They're, they're, including different sizes now into into their brand and it's it's really interesting to see and it's really good to see so what does the future hold i hope that the future holds you know more inclusivity you know we will see more and more and more diversity throughout other brands you know other brands will look at all these top leading markets in women and men's fashion and go you know what if they can do it our brand can do it too our brand can switch over and we can have diverse models and i think that if we stop the creating these ads where it's one type fits all it's a one trick pony you'll see better revenue for our company and overall, happier consumers because we're getting what we want. We want that inclusivity. So um, I think that's what the future holds for sure. So that was my 